Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn about Java Beans with GSP. So basically, we're going to cover five subtopics. First one is what is Java Bean. Second one is why Java Beans is useful. Third, what are Java Bean properties? What example of Java Bean with advantages and disadvantages of Java Bean? So what is Java Bean? Java Bean is a portable platform independent model written in Java programming language. Its components are referred to as beans. In simple terms, Java beans are classes which encapsulate several objects into a single object. It helps in assessing this object from multiple places. Java bean contains several elements like constructor, getter or setter methods, and much more. Java Beans has several conventions that should be followed. So the first one, Bean should have a default constructor with no arguments. Second one, Bean should provide getter and setter method. A getter method is used to read the value of readable property. To update the value, a setter method should be called. Third is a Java Bean should implement java.io.serializable to store and restore the state of Java Bean that you are working on. So now that you are familiar with basics of Java Beans, let's learn in detail about the properties of Java Bean. Before we look at that, let's look at why we use Java Bean. Probably the most talk about benefit using Java Beans with your web application is that connecting to Java Bean is JSP can be more user-friendly and less intimidating for non-Java web designers. So if the web application is designed prob properly, probably it's easy to separate the Java business logic with the Java presentation view. So the primary benefit is to allow better separation of the view logic from the business logic. As you can see in the figure, when the first request from the user being sent to the controller, which is the servlet, so here it will send the uh, request to the model and assess the model and invoke the business logic. Third, it will connect to the DB and save or get the data. And then when the database respond back to the model, it will send the result and set in a scope for the controller. Then it will be dispatched to the next view with, with the GSP. So let's look at the Java Bean properties. A Java Bean property can be accessed by the user of the object the feature can be any Java data type containing the classes that you define. A Java Bean property may be read, write, read only, or write only. The Java Bean properties are accessed through two methods in the Java Bean implementation class. So the first is get property name. For example, if property name is first name, your method name would be get first name to read the property. So this method is called assessor. The second method is set property name. For example, if property name is first name, your method name would be set first name to write that property. So this method is called mutator. Next, let's look more about properties of Java Bean. So properties for getter methods are must be public in nature. Written type should not be void. The getter method should be prefixed with the word get and it should not take any argument where properties of setter method this must be public in nature written type should be void the setter method has to be prefixed with the word set and it should take some argument now let's look at the example program for java bin so this is a java bit class named star that has two data members name and id for the java bin property we need to create the assessor and mutate the method, which is the first one is public string get name, set name, and then get ID, set ID. Next, let's look at the program code for this Java Bean class. Here, you can see the Java Bean class stuff. Let's check the program code, whether it has all the convention for a Java Bean. A Java Bean should have a default constructor, no argument, that is the first convention so let's check it out so you have public stuff with no argument check second one a java bean should provide getter and setter methods 
right have set id get id set name get name check next a java bean should implement java.io.serializable okay here you are here you are the staff implements java.io.serializable yes so the class is complied to the java bean convention now let's learn about some of the advantages of java bean first it is portable where java bean components are built purely in java hence are fully portable to any platform that support the java runtime environment all platform specific as well as support for java beans are implemented by the java virtual machine second it is compact and easy which Java Bean components are simple to create and easy to use. This is an important focus sector of the Java Beans architecture. It doesn't take much effort to write a simple bean. Also, a bean is lightweight, so it doesn't have to carry around a lot of inherited baggage to support the bean environment. Third, it carries the strength of the Java platform, where Java Bean is pretty compatible there isn't any new complicated mechanism for registering components with the runtime system. Though all this sounds good, using Java Beans presents some dis as disadvantages as well. So now let's check it out what those would be. Here are some disadvantages of Java Bean. First, Possibility of making a Java bean immutable and requires added effort on the part of the programmer to ensure trick safety. It is possible to reduce these disadvantages by manually freezing the object when its construction is complete and not allowing it to be used until frozen. But this variant is unworldly and rarely used in practice. Moreover, it can cause errors at runtime as the compiler cannot ensure that the programmer calls the freeze method on an object before using it. Second, because construction is split across multiple calls, a Java bean may be in an inconsistent state partway through its construction, which means the class does not have the option of enforcing consistency merely by checking the validity of the constructor parameters. Attempting to use an object when it's in an inconsistent state may cause failures that are far removed from the code containing the bug, hence difficult to debug. So that's all for now. So please read chapter 6 in my Google site for more examples on Java Bean. Thank you.